you're a bit like Ian Lavender, aren't you, in many ways? In the, or the grey hair, you mean? No, no, <laughs> not just the grey hair. I mean, Forever Pike, and yeah. you're always going to be... Forever Spike. Yeah, forever no, Spike. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why do you think that is? I mean, there's a lot well, of affection it's, in it, isn't it? Was, it? Yes, it is done with affection. I mean, it's, it's, it, put me, it put me on, Heidi Hyde put me on, put me on the map. Mm. Put a name to my face and a face to my name. Uh, and it's wonderful because uh, people still shout Heidi Hyde to me occasionally. And they get embarrassed that they've done it. So I said, "Well, you must have been." I said, "I'm just glad that you, you, you enjoyed it so much." And people do; they remember it with such love and affection. You know, he, I've always said, "Whatever I do, whatever I've done since Heidi High, and I've done a lot, and whatever I do in the future, I'll always be that bloke from Heidi High." You know, and I'm very proud of it. I really am. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. But um, some actors that resent what put them on the map, I just don't understand that attitude. But it's certainly not the case with me. I'm very proud of it. Well, I mean, it says something about, first of all, your performance and the writing, doesn't it, of that show, yeah? Because yeah. it's still remembered with it's wonderful great writing. affection. Wonderful writing. Yeah. And we went on to do You Ran With All, of course, for, yeah. for the same writers, too. And Dr. Beachy. And Dr. Beachy for David. Yeah. Well, Jimmy didn't have anything to do with that, originally. But it was, yeah, it was some wonderful times and, you know, to have been a part of that great classical comedy era that we were, you know, lucky enough to be a part of. I think we had the best of it, yeah. me and a few of the others, you know, we had the best of, best of times yeah. at that great golden comedy era. And you're yeah. almost coming home with this, aren't you, because you started... Yes, it... it's, it's, it's the first theatre I ever brought myself to as a boy. Mm -hmm. When I got on the bus in Walsall, I came over on a Saturday afternoon and I saw a Saturday matinee here for the first time in the mid-50s. I was only a kid. And I sat and watched this play and it made me laugh and I liked it. And I sort of I absorbed it and I thought, yes, I like this. I like the feel of theatre. You know, little knowing that I would go on and one day become an actor myself. But I always, you know, was drawn to it. So you started off at Grange Playhouse? Yes, I, I started actually at the co-op, yeah. first of all, then I moved on to the Grange yeah. Playhouse in Walsall. Now, I'm very proud to say that I'm now patron mm. of the very same theatre I was a 19-year-old actor in. And I went off to drama school to train to be a professional, and I left it behind, and, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful at the Grange. I've done my one-man show there a couple of years mm. ago. I took Mr Laurel there, which is my one-man mm. play. Uh, and we had a wonderful few days there with that. And then serve your apprenticeship at Coventry Belgrave. I did exactly that, yes, I learned my trade. Mm -hmm. I did everything from Shakespeare to pantomime and back again. Everything, everything you could possibly imagine I did. Yeah, I did uh, over 50 plays in the, the five years I was there. And, uh, you know, I learned, learned my business. Mm -hmm. So I've got all my experience there. Of course, kids can't do that now. There's no such thing as rep anymore. No. Not to that great extent, anyway. Yeah. So it was, I was very lucky. And moving on from there, I mean, it, people still think of you, as we said, as, as, as a spy, mm. but you've done an awful lot of theatre. I mean, what is it that appeals to you? I mean, it's, you're still doing it, so you, it must appeal. With it is. I mean, I think every actor will tell you that for their first love is the life theatre. Mm. I mean, telly is very nice and very rewarding financially, sometimes it can be. Uh, and radio is a double because you don't have to learn anything. <laughs> uh, um, but you know, filming, I'm, I'm not very experienced in front of a film camera, so it's, it's more television for me. But I think every actor will say that his first love is, is the live theatre because it's you and the audience and it's there and it's happening now and you get a great buzz from it. And although you're doing the same thing every night, you're not doing the same thing every night because you've got a different audience out there every night. Mm. So your relationship with the audience varies slightly depending on the reactions you're getting back, particularly with comedy. You know, there's nothing more rewarding than to, than to say a line in a, in a, a theatre and hear the whole audience laugh back at what you've just said. You know, there's something wonderful about that. And again, with drama, it's the same thing. You know, it's a, the adrenaline rush in, in the live theatre. So that's what I love about it. And this one, I mean, this is the first uh, grand produced uh, play for years and Over years. 40 years. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's a play that's, it's got laughs in, but it's, it's a very bittersweet it is bittersweet because yeah. it was. It's about a very sad time in the world, you know, when the mines were all shutting down in the north, mm. uh, and the, some of the, you know, the things that just kept them going were their brass bands. Yeah. And this is all about that. It's the pitfalls, literally. But excuse the pun. Mm. The pitfalls of the mining industry and, uh, and the characters that you know, yeah. the play is full of. Yeah. Grimly, grimly, different grimly relationships. A, a very thinly disguised gr grind for. I guess so. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Grimly. Yeah. Grand, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, you're playing uh, 
as a band leader. I am playing the conductor Danny, yeah. which was played wonderfully in the film by Pete Postlethwaite, of course. Yeah. And uh, yes, that's my little role in that. And uh, I've, got to, I've got to stand in front of the Wolverhampton Brass Band and conduct. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just tell me to spike. Oh, that'll be all right. I just say, well, just follow the battle. <laughs> I mean, it's not the it's not the easiest part because he's a he's a very committed and, and yes, yes. Uh, rather bitter man. He so, so he is bitter in, in yeah. a lot of ways, you know, because he he wants to win that big prize at the Albert yeah. Hall, and, uh, you know, without giving the end of the play away, I won't. Mm. But it, it is it is a. a, a a, a climb, up, oh, an uphill climb for the for the band and him, particularly him, because mm. he's not well either. Mm. Uh, and because uh, you know, the aftermath of being a minor all his life, he got a pretty bad chest. Mm. Uh, so yes, and he, he wants his band to do well, and they get a bit sloppy. Mm. So he has to. You know, not many laughs for him. I don't. You know, I'm known. Jeffrey Holland, I'm known for my smile, mm. but I can't smile in this part. Mm. Daddy's not a smiler. I'll save the smile for the curtain call at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a lot of laughs in Danny's part. No, no, uh, no. no he's quite. Good. We did a, f a photo session this morning mm. for the press, and I had to, I had to fight very hard not to smile in front of the camera. <laughs> so it was a grimacing time. Just morning. pretend you're not being paid, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's so, it's uh, what what appeals to you about the part? I mean, you. Obviously, it's, you're in a position where you can. It's nice for me because most of the stuff I get to do is comedy, yeah. and this being asked to play this part in this, you know, semi-comedy. I know, but there's no comedy for me yeah. in this at all. He's a very serious character, so it's a challenge for me to play a straight role without, you know, without the, the necessary use of comedy timing. Yeah. So that, that's one of the things that attracted me to it. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, a very sympathetic character in, in his way. You know, you do feel for him. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, I've got that to look forward to, and, you know, and I, get, I get to conduct the band, which is something that I've never done before. So that's got to be a real treat. Mm -hmm. But it's a it's a straight roll. I get my teeth into it. I stretch a few acting muscles I don't get to stretch <laughs> normally. You know. Um, what comes after this? After this, um, I'm not sure. There's talk of a play in the new year, but uh, and Christmas off. Christmas off. It looks that way. I haven't been offered a pantomime, and we're at the end of June now, so I think it's, <laughs> I, it's highly unlikely that I will be. But uh, that doesn't matter because this tour of Brass off takes us into December. Yeah. So which means I can enjoy another Christmas at home, yeah. which will be a re blessed relief. I did look. I had my first pantoless year two years ago. Uh, when they, they they rang up to say that they were terribly sorry, they loved me, but they hadn't got a panto to offer me this year, so I was um, I was unemployed at Christmas, and I went round with my wife and I went round to friends for drinks on Boxing Day, and I haven't done that for thirty seven years, <laughs> so that was quite quite something. And do you know what? I really enjoyed not doing a pantomime. And your friend said you take your time. <laughs> It was really, really nice not to have to worry about dashing off on Boxing Day morning to go somewhere and do a matinee. You know, it was uh, just put your feet up. Well, presumably Judy's in pantomimes as well. Judy, no, Judy doesn't, doesn't do panto anymore. No, she, she stopped that a few years ago because, to be honest with you, she only did it so that we could do it together. Yeah. Uh, there was virtually no money left to pay her at the end of the day. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's, it's something she could quite happily live without and mm. she always comes to me wherever I happen to be as a couple of weeks with me over the holiday you know the Christmas to New Year time um, uh, but no, no she's not doing one and so we should be at home this year right the Holland's at home this year <laughs> <laughs> well that's super yeah, so people come along and see it I hope they will right yeah, please please come and see it. seats at all prices <laughs> thanks very much indeed. thank you